Mac, main two story, all stories ain't true, but this one is. I got some time for this, baby. Today we talking about Ding Ding and Valentine's Day Massacre, 1993, you feel me? Let me move something away, let me shoot this right here. Good morning, everybody, you know what I mean? Good morning, it says here, the reason why I wanna talk about this, obviously, Valentine's Day yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Good morning to the people just pulling up. Can y'all hear me? Let me know before I continue. Let me know if y'all can hear me. This is an interesting thing, man. I remember when I first met Ding Ding. There's a couple of them. I didn't all these years. I didn't know there were so many um, other players in this in this in the story. But Ding Ding, I met him personally in the fall building when he came through in '93. I was already up in there since like '91, '92. Good morning, man. Good morning. Says right here, says right here. A lot about this thing I didn't know about, so I went back to it and read up on it. When I remember Ding Ding pulling up, only thing I remember was a skinny, dirty dude. And then years later, told me Ding Ding was a wild boy or whatever. Now, let me read the story to y'all. It says, a Bronx jury began deliberating yesterday. This is, this is, a uh... okay. Let me read this to y'all. All right. June 17, 1994. Dang, dang. A Bronx man was convicted yesterday, you know what I'm saying, in the murder of six people on Valentine's Day, 1993. It was a wild time. Y'all think that this drill shit is, is crazy right now? It was a wild time in the Bronx back then, you know? I remember seeing this on the news. They were showing the front of the building and all that. And um, right now, the reason why this came, this case recently came back up was because the people that the family sued the uh the soup of the building basically saying that they were supposed to have security there and they didn't have security. That's how they was able to get up in the building. Right? To those who knew him, Elliot Lopez did not seem to be the sort of teenager likely to be seduced by the street code or easy money, short tempers, and rapid retribution. A star athlete. With a ready smile, his goal was college and the way. Remember, we talked about Elliot Lopez and the way out of the South Bronx neighborhood whose street corners were dotted with dozens of other young men who had long ago traded the promise for the future, for the grim pickings of the present. But there were times when it appeared that his perspective on the crazy life was more than that of an outsider. He knew some wild people, recall Kent, his track coach, at Morris High School, who remembered him being greeted on the on the street by swaggering young men with gold chains. Back in the days, niggas was getting that bread. Elliot was such a nice person, Al. Yet he knew the bad people, who the bad people were, but not like, you know, stay away from them. He wouldn't stay away from them. He knew who they was, but he wouldn't stay away from them. Hit that like button. Salute, boy, I see you, man. We gotta talk too, man, because I'm clapping a few fools today. Don P, salute. Um, making friends, salute. Kevin, former eBay, y'all already know. Regular degular. Hit the like button. Right? Okay. One person Mr. Lopez knew was Anthony Casales. His sister was a friend of Mr. Casales' wife. All right? So that's ding ding. Anthony Casales, right? Um, so it says that Elliot knew ding ding. His sister was a friend of, of, of ding ding's wife. Lord S, flanked by his associates, Ding Ding strolled through the streets near 161st Street and Tenton Avenue, leading the loosely knit drug gang neighbors and the police say. At some point, at some point, no one seemed quite sure. Elliot joined his, his crew. They grew close. You know what I'm saying? So you got the good dude meeting up with Ding Ding. That's Elliot, right? They grew close on the street. Elliot, Lopez, and Ding Ding were known as Tato and Ding Ding, right? Anthony Casales, AKA. And last week, they were arrested and charged with being a gunman who lined six people up face down in the My Haven apartment on St. Valentine's Day and killed them with single shots to the head. The motive, the police say, was to avenge Ding Ding's bruised honor after his wife had been beaten up last summer and the fight stemming from a long feud, um, 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 running feud. So Ding Ding was locked up, you know what I'm saying? And he heard dudes um, ran down on his wife 
and beat her up. You know what I'm saying? Hit that like button. So he in jail, like, yo, man, this basically when I get home, I'm lining these cats up. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what he did. Last Wednesday, the authorities say the re revenge came full circle at the entrance to the Bronx County building when Lourdes Casales was fatally shot by a friend of the Mott Haven victims. To the people who knew Mr. Lopez, the disquieting thought is how he could have had anything to do with the violent revenge. In part, the two contrasted sharply, you know, Elliot and Ding Ding, neatly dressed and respectful. Mr. Lopez avoided running with any one click. He was even tempered, puzzled by the violence around him. He had just finished high school and had been accepted to Baruch College, although he never enrolled. But people in the neighborhood weren't even sure if Mr. Casales had finished, um, basically Ding Ding, had finished junior high school. He had a bad reputation, AKA, uh, and, and other words, excuse me. And they remembered his predilection, I don't know what that word means, for the funky, baggy clothes, the high fashion in the street, and how his tempered was best left unprovoked. So Ding Ding was a, was a, was a hot boy. Thomas Rinaldi, Mr. Lopez's 11th grade teacher, remember Elliot as the one of the one of the several students who seemed to be on the fence. Right? They were at that point where they were going to make a decision. He said temptations were presenting themselves. He was um, gregarious, can do the can do type who got along with everybody. That was no small accomplishment in a place where the orbits of adolescent cliques curtail easy interaction. Let me see some of y'all YouTubers read. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Touches, I see you, bro. His home life, according to his teachers, basically, you know what I'm saying? He was a cool ass kid. All right. When they were about, what they were about was having girls, nice cars, and gold, said one man. Hit that like button. Said one man who knew Ding Ding and his friends. In August 92, he was held on Rikers Island um, on a drug charge. Three years earlier, he served six months drug charges, which is wild because when I seen Ding Ding come to a 93, he like a pure new jack. He like somebody that somebody was going to punch in their face. You know what I'm saying? Rich, salute. American Leap, salute. Kenny. And Al Capone, the dirty one, salute. I'm Al Capone, the dirty one. Right? Okay, now... In August 92, he's held on Rikers Island on a drug charge. Three years earlier, he served six months on a drug charge. You know what I'm saying? Police records show he also had convictions for assault, robbery, theft with a deadly weapon, and unlawful imprisonment. Maria Santana, a neighborhood woman, was drawn to, to, to Ding Ding. Attraction and attraction and an attraction that the police say ultimately cost her her life. She was the sister of Edwin Santiago. Apparently, the focus of the slands on February 14th. So they say Ding Ding was after Edwin, right? Ironically, Edwin is one of the only dudes that didn't get killed. Hit that like button. Anthony and Maria, excuse me, Maria sent, okay, okay. Anthony and Maria, Ding Ding and Maria, began dating about two years ago and soon he virtually lived with a family. Spending many nights in the apartment with Maria's mother, Julia, cooked for him and did his laundry. While Maria's mother, um, she did a thing for him, right? And while Maria wanted to marry him, according to one woman, he seemed interested in only um, practical advantages of the relationship. I don't think he wanted to marry her, said the woman, a friend of Maria's. I always felt that they was just using her. You know what I'm saying? Even during one of his prison um, um, terms, Maria Santana remained devoted. She used to send him money so he could buy stuff at the commissary, the friend said, and he used to call her on the phone collect. When he was released, Mr. Casales, ding, ding, romantic interest wandered toward Maria's friend, Lourdes. Wow. So now it makes sense. He was with Maria, and then he started messing with her friend, Lourdes. Serrano, God bless the dead, because she was the one that got she the one that got killed inside the courthouse. I'm gonna tell you how that went. Mr. Collette Salas, Ding Ding, and Miss Serrano, those who knew him say dated without Maria Santana's knowledge. So he was cheating on Maria with Lourdes. When Maria Santana found out about her client their, their romance, 
she served her ties to both. She severed her ties to both of them. About a year ago, Mr. Casales married Miss Serrano and she later gave birth to their son. So he was with Maria. He left Maria, got married to Lourdes and then had a baby. The animosity between his wife and his former girlfriend now grew, eventually erupted in a fight on the Bronx Street last summer. During the fight, Maria, Santana's brother, okay, so the ex-girlfriend, Maria, brother, Edwin, came to his sister's defense and slapped the other woman, causing, them, causing her to drop the baby. This is where it all went wrong. Maria's the ex-joint. She's mad. Her brother Edwin sees the, the, the new wife or whatever. Why Ding Ding is locked up, slaps her. She drops the baby outside, right? Tells for the pen, salute. Kenny, I got you, I got you, All right? So now the ex-girlfriend's brother slaps his baby mother and wife, and they drop the baby. So plotting from prison, this is the next one. The police say that Mr. Casales began plotting the killings sometime after August 1992. When Mr. Casales, when Mrs. Casales visited her husband at Rikers Island and told him about the fight. At the same time, Ms. Casales was growing close to Mr. Lopez and his sister, according to their friends. The friendship between Mr. Lopez and the, and the Casaleses was much was such that Mr. Lopez planned to bring his clown act to the birthday party for the Casales' son birthday in March. They were tight, said the 18-year-old friend. The week before the slayings, according to one woman, Mr. Casales went to the Santiago Santana home, professing his love for the people he would later be accused of murdering. Crazy. The police said, and you know what's got what, what got, really got crazy is that Ding Ding's wife was at the court, and then somebody came. Now, the dude that came and killed her, I was at Attica with him. I used to spend a yard with him and, and Flex from Brooklyn on um, the one. Flex, y'all know Flex from Rock Steady Crew Flex. You know what I'm saying? Those were Tom Cross's people. You know what I'm saying? I met them through Tom. Rise and Grind, Mikey D, salute. You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay. The week before the slayings, According to one woman, Mr. Casales went to the Santiago apartment, professing his love for the people he would later be accused of killing. The police said Mr. Casales and Mr. Lopez, along with three friends, returned to that apartment to extract their, their revenge on the youth who had slapped Lord S. Casales. Five others were killed for reasons the police may never know, right? 10 days later, a friend of the victims shot and killed Lord S. Casales. At the end of a, of a tale of revenge twice taken, seven people are dead and six people have been locked up and charged with murder. I don't think that there's anybody out there with any further axe to grind, said one investigator, right? So let's let's just go over the let's just go over it again. On the morning of this is the this is the court papers. So this is the that that first thing was the article. This is the court papers. And this is the um, this is the actual case right here. On the morning of February 14, 1993, the police discovered the bodies of six individuals who had been shot to death. Subsequent investigation revealed that four victims, Miguel Rivera, 22, Christopher Hernandez, 15 years old, Edwin Santiago, 17 years old, God bless all these people, and Annette Medina, 17, had been shot in the back of the head. Julia Santana, 40, was shot in the eyeball. This nigga was bugging. Maria Santana, 26, was shot twice in the head while wearing a coat and holding her keys to the apartment. It was later learned that she had been forced to open up the apartment for the perpetrators of these multiple homicides. So they, they put her under pressure and made her open up that door. I was up top with Ding Ding and Wendy in 2001. Also, we was in Southport. Yeah, I heard Ding Ding turn to a wild boy. He was soft as, he was soft as shit when he first came through, though. 
You know what I'm saying? It's pussy. You know what I'm saying? Most niggas that do shit like this is pussy niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? I remember when he came through in 93. I, I was with him. 93. They put him in CMC. They put him down in two lower. Malayan. Hit the like button on the way in. Although some initial leads pointed. Okay, so let me just give y'all a breakdown. Ding Ding was fucking with Maria. Right? He was living with her for like two years. He bounced on her and started messing with her friend Lourdes. Now Lourdes, he got married to her. Had a baby with her. You know what I'm saying? Maria and Lourdes used to be scrapping back and forth. So Maria, brother, the, um, you know what I'm saying? While Ding Ding was locked up. He seen her. He slapped fire out of her. She dropped the baby, right? She dropped the baby. Ding Ding heard about that. So Lord has went up to see Ding Ding while he was locked on the island and was like, yeah, this is what happened. They say he started plotting right there. So he came home. When he came home, he ran up in the crib with a bunch of people, told Shorty, opened up the door, went up in there. Most likely, the dudes that was with him didn't know that he was about to put all that work in. They probably that that probably was never a part of the subject because um um because the, who they was looking for wasn't even in the house. Who they was looking for wasn't even in the house. The dude that they was trying to get, I don't think they even killed him. Let me see. Let me go back to the to the. This is the people that got clapped. Miguel Rivera, twenty two, don't got nothing to do with nothing. Christopher Hernandez, fifteen, nothing to do with nothing. Edwin Santiago. Annette Medina, 17. All these 17 and 15 years old, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, although some leads initially pointed to, to defend it as the mastermind behind the Valentine's Day execution murders, it was not until some 10 days later after the defendant's wife was killed and his friend shot and wounded in the Bronx court, courthouse that the police said, interview, that the police interviewed the defendant. Okay, so Ding Ding was basically for 10 days, they didn't even know it was him. The police ain't know. He was going to court with his wife. You know what I'm saying? And now somebody else, I'm going to tell y'all who that was in a second. I was with him in Attica. Ran down on him in the court. Boom, boom, boom. Start busting. Shot Ding Ding homeboy and killed his baby mother in the court. And that's why, that's why um, the security went up in Bronx Supreme Court. Because back in the days, you used to be able to go up in there without no metal detectors. It wasn't until after this happened that they put metal detectors in there and stopped dudes from coming up in the court with, with bangers. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't until 10 days later after Ding Ding's wife was killed and his friend shot and wounded in the Bronx courthouse that the police interviewed um, Ding Ding. However, as the hearing court found and the record amp, um, amply supports because shootings inside the courthouse are thankfully rare, the courthouse in incident was being handled with enormous interest and um, immediacy. And the numerous interviews that the defendant underwent at the 44th precinct were all related to his status to the victim. So they wasn't even worried about the other shit. They was just worrying about, they was questioning him as a victim. They wasn't even suspecting him for smoking six people, you know what I'm saying, before that. And that's a, that's a testimony of the times too, because back then you run up in a crib with, with your mans and all that, you don't know your man's about to catch six bodies. We ain't talk about this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we, we probably was going to run up in the crib and, you know what I'm saying, and, and hit somebody in the head with the piss, with the piece or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But we probably wasn't going to go up in there and smoke six packs. It ain't going to go down like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's weird that the 10 days went, they was investigating this, and they didn't, dudes did not tell back then like that. They ain't tell. Now, first 48. Give a nigga a Pepsi and a cigarette, and it's over. He off to the races. Beep, beep, beep. Hit that like button, man. Y'all doing the wrong thing right now. Duck, duck, do. Salute. Good morning. Polo. He Muslim now? Right? Now, others knew what time it was. It was also with Toro. Malik, some like him. Miss Benzo, you already, you know what I'm saying? So basically, they was looking at Ding Ding. They wasn't looking at him as a suspect with these, with these, with these um Peter Rolls that he did ten days prior. They was looking at him as a victim because his wife just got killed and his man just got shot in the court. You know what I'm saying? Now, 
All right. So they interviewed um, the defendant. However, as the court hearing found and the record amply supports because the shootings inside the courthouse are rare, the courthouse incident was being handled with a, um, enormous interest and immediacy. Right. And the numerous interviews that the defendant underwent at the 44 precinct were all related to the, his status to the victim. So they were worrying about his wife. They wasn't worrying about all the niggas that he just killed. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, indeed, um, because a court officer had discharged his weapon during the incident, the authorities treated this investigation as they would treat a shooting in which police officers had to use their weapon. Consequently, as, at the police precinct, there were numerous senior level police office, uh, off officials and representatives at the DA's office. Defendant, along with every other witness to the shooting incident, was carefully interviewed and none were given their um, Miranda warnings. Hit the like button. Defendant was later brought to the 40th precinct and the police continued to interview him about the courthouse shooting. While being interviewed about the courthouse shooting, defendant was informed that his wife had died. You know what I'm saying? After some um, further discussion, so Ding Ding sitting up in there, his wife just got murdered. He just killed six six people on Valentine's Day. His man just got shot. The police, there's mad stuff going on at one time. Well, oh boy, right? Oh man, oh this is this is the bad part. This is this is where gangsters go wrong. Let me tell you something, man. This is where the gangsters go wrong. All right. So he got informed that his wife just died. After some further discussion with the detective, including a religious appeal that the hearing court found to be the functional equivalent of interrogation, defendant surprised the detective by making a brief one sentence oral admission regarding the killing of Edwin Santiago. That was the one. Okay, yeah. The detective interrupted the interview, took a break, and administered the Miranda warnings to the defendant. So up until this point, he wasn't being um, um, looked at as a suspect. He decided to invoke a priest, you know what I'm saying, and tell a priest what happened. Hit the like button, man. Y'all bu bugging. Y'all bugging right now. I'd rather the 22 people, man. Y'all got to hit that like button, man. Y'all do something too early. Shit. Simeon, I see you. Or Simon, the atheist killer. Hit the like. Son, 93 was the days of the Cowboys. Y'all, and 94. I gotta hit that like button, though. It gets deeper. Let me tell you how Mac Mean got something to do with all this. <laughs> I'm trolling. Because y'all gotta hit the like button. Let it go up to 30 at least. Mm. Fuck it. The real one's gonna chill with me. I'll be back. I was in LA when I'm in the princess. Oh, y'all still ain't hitting that like button. That means the trolls is here. The trolls is people too. You know what I'm saying? You gotta let them live. Okay. So the detective, after after Ding Ding looked like he was about to start ratting, the detective was like, hold on, puto. Let me read you your Miranda rights, you know what I'm saying, before you go any further. So he already, he just, he didn't tell nobody, anybody else. He said Edwin Santiago, him specifically, the dude that, that it started with. You know what I'm saying? Now, he gave him his Miranda rights. Okay, after, oh, okay, the detective interrupted the interview, took a break, and administered the Miranda um, warnings to defend it. Defendant then acknowledged in writing that he understood and was waiving his constitutional right against self-incrimination and to counsel and proceeded to give a two-page 
detailed written confession that minimized his role in the Valentine's Day massacre. So basically, you the head honcho, you went up in there, took your boys up in there to smoke six packs. Then to well, Polo say he did. Let me well, let me see. He said he minimized his role. The fact is, he shouldn't have been telling from the beginning. If you went up in there and you you had a pistol in your hand, you killing 15-year-olds and shooting grown women in the eyeballs and all that. Hit that like button, y'all. Ding ding is the reason why everybody, so everybody talk about ding ding being, you know what I'm saying, the the, the street dude, the, you know what I mean, the one up north. I, I don't understand that, but ding ding is the reason why everybody went down for this. It was your idea. It was your wife got smoked. Once his wife got killed, he decided to become a good Christian. You know what I'm saying? Several hours later, after his detailed written confession, several hours later, the, the district attorney again, administered the Miranda warnings and conducted a brief interview of defendant on videotape. I know there ain't 13 trolls up in here. Let's go. Let me sing, singing like Luther Vandross. Hit that like button, man. There's more, a lot more here. But I'm gonna get through it the way I get through it. You know what I'm saying? Good morning to everybody, man. The real ones, man, you already know. Hit me when you land a man in the city, baby. And please don't give it up because I'm with it, baby. 20, 30, 40, fucking 50, baby. Can't understand that. Can't understand how it's your master plan. You go rat on everybody. I seen Ding Ding come through. I seen all that shit on his face. I was like, what happened to you, bro? Okay, we got 25 likes. Y'all keep it going. I'll give y'all some time, man. I'm dead serious, man, because, you know, getting sick of trolls and all that, man. Why these dudes always dissing me, man? I'm tired of talking to my people that be dissing me. It's just, it's just too much, man. All right, we're doing the right thing. Keep going up. Keep hitting that like button. I found out the thing to do was, you know, like, cats wait for you to go live, then they go live and they diss you. You know what I'm saying? Just crazy, man. My niggas on the West Coast. Okay, we almost there. I need that thing to go to 30. We get back to the story. The real ones stick around for a couple of minutes while these dudes get sorted out. Venezuela Reds in the building. I bet you didn't hit the like button. Hey, yo, Ding Ding look like you too, Venezuela. I ain't gonna lie. The one that 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 smacked the he died. That was Edwin Santiago, I think. Let me go. Let me go up. I think that was Edwin. The one that did that. The one they say that did that. Uh, excuse me. All right. Man. Several hours later, the ADA, you know what I'm saying, again, administered 
the, uh, the Miranda warnings and conducted a brief interview of the defendant on videotape. So now they got Ding Ding on videotape. You know what I mean? At this point, defendant declined to answer any further questions, but reaffirmed the veracity of the contents of his written statement. Basically, he said, I ain't talking on camera, but everything I already told the dude is true. Basically playing a game. He's trying to get himself out of it, but at the same time, he already naming other dudes. They probably already on the street going to kick these dudes' doors in. You know what I mean? Based off with Ding Ding. Now, and I mean, like, like some of y'all worship some of these cats, man. Like, they tough or whatever. Or, you know, like being savage and tough, man. When, what does it really mean at the end of the day? That six innocent people got to lay down. For what? For what? And then get all these other cats pulled in the joint. I'm pretty sure there was like four co-defendants. Let me see how many co-defendants, man. Let me read it from, let me read this to y'all. Anyway, several hours later, okay. All right. Several hours later, the ADA again ministered the, the Miranda warnings and conducted a brief interview of the defendant on videotape. At this point, the defendant declined to answer further questions and but reaffirmed the contents of his written um, statement. Based on defendant's statements, the put statements with an S. Hit that like button, man. Based on the victim's statements, defendant's statements, the police recovered certain physical evidence linking him to the six Valentine's Day um, um, murders, including a silencer and ammunition found hidden in a television set in a room where defendant had been staying. He gave him the joint, had been staying. The, the hearing court denied defendant's motion to suppress all three statements and the physical evidence as the tainted fruits of unwarned custodial interrogation. Boyd and told on everybody. The question presented for review is whether, and this is the appeal, y'all, because he he puts he this is his appeal that he put in. The question presented for review is whether the hearing court er erred, where they call it erred, you know, like in court language, they call it erred, e e r e r r e d, but erred, basically made a mistake in finding the defendant was not in custody for Miranda purposes when he made his first brief oral admission about the murder of Edwin Santiago to the, te to the DT who was interviewing him about the courthouse shooting. Basically saying because he wasn't there for that, you know what I mean? Like they was trying to get it thrown out of the court. They upheld that shit. The hearing court, which had an opportunity to hear, see, and otherwise evaluate the witnesses and their credibility found that a reasonable person in the defendant's position would have felt free to leave before making his oral admission. And that therefore defendant was not in custody. And its decision, the hearing court found that this was particularly true given that within the realm of how, if he was smart, luckily he wasn't smart for family. If he was smart, he would walk right out of that, went to PR and chill, mourned his wife, and prayed forever for them six people you murdered. Let me show y'all something else. This is how the this is how, I'm gonna show you how the, the news article um read. The shootings of six people in my haven, blah blah blah. Okay, at the center of the cave, blah, blah, blah. It says the police say Mr. Casales began plotting the killing sometime in August 92 when he was being held on Rikers Island on drug charge. And um, his wife was injured in the fight with Edwin Santiago. So, yeah, Edwin Santiago was killed. Um, a student at the South Bronx, at a South Bronx high school. The police said Mr. Santiago was one of the six victims and he was the intended target. Yeah, he got his target and killed everybody else. No witnesses.
He was living in Burke on Burke. The men arrested with Mr. Casales, who was 21 years old and lives at 1140 Burke Avenue in Baychester, Bronx, were members with Mr. Um, Ding Ding and what they called as a loosely knit drug gang. Um, the others were identified as Elliot Lopez, 18, of 730, 161st, Louis Romero of 845. Reverend James A. Polite Boulevard, whatever the fuck that is. Aguado um, Rosado, 19, of 152nd Street. Louis Ramos of Cedric, all from the Bronx. Man, all of, yo, all of these cats, man. All of these cats, they was like, like, I know about the Bronx, this was all split up. This wasn't, this ain't all in one place. This is like all, you know what I'm saying? These cats is coming from a, a So who stopped though, Polo? Yeah, on live, on YouTube. I'm about to get off of this though, I mean. Pull up, pull up, I'm about to get off of this. Hit me one the land of man and city, baby. Moral of the story, the moral of the story, even though um, Polo said that they they all knew that they was going to go up in there and do that, you know what I'm saying? They might have did. You feel me? They might have did. But the crazy thing is that Ding Ding is the one that took everybody down, including Ding Ding. Colin Ferguson. I remember that, too. I was locked in CT, saw that on the news. They made it a Latin King thing. That's sad. If he just hit the, I think he used to be blood. If he just hit the one who smoked her, then probably could have got away with it. You ain't going to get in away with six bodies, not six at the same time. That's right. Mr. Red Diamonds, about to hop out of this lake and get on. Huh? You on the lake? Where's that at, man? Hit that like button. Salute Mr. X. And you're right, man. You're right, man. That was a bit. That was an ill time, though, man. I ain't gonna hold you, man. That was an ill, 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 ill time, man. In the Bronx, crazy ill. I mean, they talk about right now, like a lot of stuff that's happened, but we. This is a repeat of what we already seen. You know what I'm saying? We seen some shit. We seen some shit. Same thing happened in Ron doing Ace case. Six people were shot. Three died. Anyway, I'm off for this, man. I'll get with y'all later on. Mac mean true story. All stories ain't. This one was.